In this video, we're going to review the Vizio SB2920-C6. It's a 29-inch soundbar. It's a 2.0 system. It does not include a subwoofer. We're going to take a look at the sound quality, what comes inside the box, how easy it is to set up, and we're going to look at four reasons why to consider this particular product. Aside from the sound bar, what comes in the box is you get a quick start guide. Of course you get a remote control and they do supply the batteries. They also supply three sets of connection cables. That's a little unheard of in the sound bar market arena. This will allow for connectivity to pretty much any equipment that you currently have. They include mounting hardware, but they don't include a mounting template. You don't necessarily need a mounting template. But if you wanted to mount this on the wall as opposed to placing it on a tabletop, a mounting template's helpful. You would have to upgrade to a higher Vizio soundbar to get a mounting template. You're looking at the control buttons that are built into the top of the soundbar. If your remote's not working, the batteries die, you lose the remote, you can still operate the soundbar with these manual buttons. They have power, input, Bluetooth, and then your volume up and down. Now I mentioned the Bluetooth button. This soundbar does allow you to stream audio from your smart device, whether it's a tablet, a phone, etc., via Bluetooth wireless to the soundbar. So if you have a favorite uh, music streaming station, you can listen to it through this soundbar using the Bluetooth feature. We flipped the soundbar around to take a look at some of the connection points on the back. There are quite a number of connection points on the back of this Vizio soundbar. It's actually quite simple to set up. So on the left we have two inputs and one output. This yellow one on the top is a digital coaxial cable which has been supplied in the box. Just below it is the optical toss link input that is also supplied in the box. Now I mentioned earlier that there would be four reasons to consider this. One is if you have a powered subwoofer that you aren't using but you want to be able to use, you could incorporate it with this soundbar. You'll notice here it says sub out. This is a line level, line level subwoofer output. So if your subwoofer has an input like this on the back, you might be able to incorporate this soundbar with the subwoofer so that you get the deep rich bass. This is only a 2.0 soundbar system so it's just basically going to give you the left and right stereo channel. So now we're going to take a look at the analog input connection points. Now depending on the age of your television, for example if it's 2007 or older, it might not output digital audio content and you might need to use the analog inputs that are shown here. You've got your typical white and red which is your left and right stereo and there's also an auxiliary stereo jack that cable, these cables are supplied in the box. Actually, it's one cable that could be used either here or here, but not in both. Last but not least, for you diehard USB fans, you can play your music that's on a USB stick by sticking it right inside this port right here. So right before we do a quick setup and sound test, we want to go over the four reasons we mentioned earlier why to consider this soundbar. We happen to mention the first one, which is if you already own a subwoofer or planning to add one in the future, you can do that for great bass during a movie. But if you're having difficulty hearing the voices or understanding voices in things like news programs or talk shows, this soundbar is certainly going to enhance the clarity and depth of the sound coming from your flat screen television speakers. The third reason to consider this is that it is an affordable option to use as a Bluetooth speaker or if you want to listen to your music streaming over the internet from your iPhone or your Android phone or your tablet, you can stream it wirelessly right to the speaker and it's going to certainly improve the sound as compared to the speakers built into your phone. So the fourth and the final reason that we want to give for why to consider this soundbar is it will be an improvement to the speakers that are in your thin flat screen television. I think it stands to reason that the speakers built into a thin flat screen television simply can't compare to the weighted amplifier and speaker and design of this soundbar itself. So now let's take a quick look at the setup. It's simple and then do a sound test. Generally speaking, there are two methods you can use to hook this Vizio soundbar up to your television audio. The first method we're going to use is the digital toss link method. 
Again, that cable has been supplied by Vizio in the box, which is a little unheard of with other competitive brands. Now, if your television happens to be older than a 2007, you might want to wait just a minute for the second method. Now, the Vizio soundbar, there are more than two ways to connect this soundbar to your equipment. These might be the quickest ways, and now we're going to demonstrate the Toslink optical connector. Now you'll notice on the diagram here the unusual shape of the optical connector so you have to have it lined up with the jack itself properly in order for it to properly seat into the input. It snapped into place. Now the other end of this cable you would want to plug into your source. For example, uh, if your television has a digital audio Toslink optical output on the back of the TV, you would want to try that. If it doesn't and you have a cable or satellite box, you would want to connect it there. So just a moment ago I mentioned that if your TV is older than a 2007 you'll probably want to use the analog connection which is the simple red-white cable that they supplied in the box. You want to plug the red into the red and the white into the white. You want to duplicate this process on the back of your television or on the back of your satellite box or on the back of your cable box. Now I do want to mention that you can hook up multiple devices at the same time. In this case we have the digital audio source connected and the analog audio source connected. For example if you have an old CD player you want to listen to through the soundbar you can and you can listen to your TV source simply by changing to that particular input. We want to test the Bluetooth streaming of the soundbar. On the top of the soundbar we press the Bluetooth button and we notice the indicators on the left of your screen start searching for devices. So on our iOS device, we turn Bluetooth on and it immediately picks up the Vizio SB2920. Simply, ta simply tapping the Vizio brand and the two should pair fairly quickly. So we've run the soundbar through a handful of tests and we also adjusted the treble and the bass settings on the soundbar during the tests. When it was just a voice, whether it came from a news program, commercial, etc., the treble did in fact impact the clarity of the voice, but not by a significant amount. The bass, however, did not impact the clarity or resonance of the voice itself. We found that the bass was impactful during certain music audio tracks but not all music audio tracks. Now the other thing that we tested was the overall volume of the soundbar and we set the soundbar all the way to a hundred percent and what we found at a hundred percent which we don't necessarily believe anybody would listen at that volume was that it was a little bit distorted when we back the volume down to about 85 percent or 90 percent the the volume the clarity of the sound was fully restored and it was great however uh, we're, our studio Our studio is quite a large room and we walk about 45 feet away streaming Bluetooth and at that point the Bluetooth started to break up a little bit which is about right because Bluetooth's range is maybe about 40 feet with no obstructions. However, the volume of the sound at 40 feet we thought was a little bit on the low side. So if you're intending for this for maybe a party with a lot of people, we think you might be disappointed in it but only in that aspect. However, overall this definitely improved the sound quality of the speakers compared to the speakers in a television and it would be a great buy. So if you wanted to add a subwoofer at a later date you can upgrade this system at your own pace and as your budget permits. We thought that at the price point of just under eighty dollars this was probably on a short list list for gifts or even for your own television use purposes. Hey we want to thank you for watching today. Please subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with new products and reviews tips, how-tos, etc. And by all means, if you know anybody who's interested in this type of stuff, share it, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, or just email them a link. Thank you. Have a great day.